Hey Vine Church, Pastor Brandon here. Hope you're having a good week. Uh, we're going to jump back into our Bible as it is every Thursday that we do this. On Thursdays we tend to jump into a certain passage of scripture, meditate, think deeply on it, and just see what the Lord has for us in that, and then let that move us into a time of communication, prayer uh, with God. So today we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 14. Uh, recently we've been going through the Proverbs. Of course, Proverbs is a is just the wisdom of God, a bunch of little nuggets of wisdom that God's giving to humanity in, in order to just give them wisdom of how to live life. Like if you just want, want like an old wise, wise sage to come alongside of you and just share wisdom nuggets for you on what to do in life, like this is the, this is the book of the Bible for that. Proverbs is that. So um, we're not going to read through the whole chapter of 14. Like, or like I said, there's a lot of different little you know, nuggets you could pull out. I'm just pulling out some that stand, some, some that stand out to me. So I encourage you, uh, read through it on your own, see what God might have for you. But as we go through these ones, maybe there's certain pieces of these that God would have you meditate and think a little more deeply on. So as I talk about them, essentially that's what we're doing. We're just thinking a little bit more deeply on these passages. So uh, Proverbs 14, I'm going to start off with verse 12 here. It says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. Um, This is a fairly well-known proverb, I think, but the idea that there's a path or a way that seems correct to humanity, but in the end, that path leads to death or destruction. So it's that idea of making all of our decisions in life based off of our own human insight and wisdom. So I need to do this in life. I want to make this decision. I'm making this course of life. Like, here's my paths, my plans in life. If I'm making all of my life plans based off of what I believe is correct or wise in my own human insight and not seeking God, his wisdom, his direction, the end of that is destruction or death. So that idea of making sure that as those plans are being done, it's done in tandem with the, the wisdom of God. You know, even seeking the wisdom of God like we are in the book of uh, Proverbs here. Right? So just not making plans on our own human insight. Uh, verse 13 says, Even in laughter the heart may ache, and rejoicing may end, and rejoicing may end in grief. I thought this was an interesting little nugget here, right? That, that even, uh, even in laughter, the heart may ache. So you ever had those moments where you're going through deep heartache in life and someone might throw out a joke, which seems like a really weird, inappropriate moment, but you just needed a laugh in that moment? Thinking about, you know, just the, the, the pain and agony we go through. And sometimes you just need to laugh even in the midst of it. Like, so it's that idea that Life isn't always just grief or laughter or joy. It's a mixture of both at different times. Sometimes in the same event, sometimes in different seasons. Like the next one where it says, and rejoicing may end in grief. There may be a season of joy and rejoicing and laughter in life. And there may be an end of that might end in a season of grief. And so you you might be thinking like, life isn't just all of one or the other. Like if you're going through a season of grief right now, There will be seasons of laughter and rejoicing and joy in the future. And if you're going through one of those seasons of joy, to be reminded that life will bring grief from time to time. And that ability, even in that moment, to have both of those. Like, even that's a beautiful, godly thing. Uh, Verse 15 says, The simple believe anything, but the prudent gives thoughts to their steps. So this idea that, like, 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 dispel the myth that Christians aren't about deep thought, logic, reason, diving in. Like, that's a, that's a fallacy. Uh, even God's saying here, this idea of simple belief. Don't just simply believe anything. Don't just hear something and say, well, that's got to be truth. Uh, how, how much of our world is probably find ourselves in that a little bit today, where we hear some little snippet on social media or on a news channel or something like that, and like, well, that must be truth. Like, the, the, don't be the simple believe anything. Don't be someone who believes anything. But the prudent gives thoughts to their steps. The prudent is the one that really searches, digs deep, and gives thoughts to, to all that's going on in life and all that's going in front of them in their life. Um, it says here, that in verse 16, it says, The wise fear the Lord and shun evil, but a fool is hot-headed and yet feels secure. Um, another translation says, the wise man is cautious as he turns from evil, and a fool is hot-headed or reckless. Uh, the, the idea of hot-headed and reckless here. But the idea of a wise person is cautious, or that fear of the Lord is the idea of caution. There's, it's a wise aspect to be a cautious person. That person turns from evil, but the hot-headed, reckless person is a foolish person. So 
I mean, even, even that idea, like, are we a person that just runs full steam into something reckless, you know, or is that person that we are a little bit cautious, really seeing all the different angles, see what's going on and have some measuredness to our decisions that we're making. Um, the next one, verse 17 says, a quick tempered person does foolish things and the one who devises evil schemes is hated. So thinking of that quick tempered person who does foolish things. You know, how many of us have done that multiple times over in our life, right? We, the, the anger or frustration of a moment seeps in and we're controlled by the, the, the emotions of that moment to do something that is foolish. That quick-tempered, easily angered, easily frustrated person, it says, does foolish things. We've all done that, but is that the marker of our life? You know, so let's, I mean, let's even ask the Lord to maybe show us when we're getting close to that quick-tempered scenario and, and convict us of, of pulling out of that at that moment. Uh, verse 21 says, it's a, uh, it is sin to despise one's neighbors, despise or um, uh, uh, treat with contempt, right? So the idea is it is a sin to treat with contempt or despise one's neighbor, but blessed is the one who is kind to the needy or generous to the needy, All right? So I mean, that, that you know, speaks to me as well, that idea that like when my neighbor is in need, am I like disconnected, uninvolved, not concerned for what's going on, but the reality is the blessed person, the person who's blessed is the person who's generous to that person in need. So recognizing the need around me, not shutting my heart off to it, but opening my heart to that, opening my, my pocketbook even, and being generous uh, to those in need around me. Uh, verse 23 says, all hard work brings profit, but mere talk leads only, only to poverty. Uh, this little nugget here, right? The idea that like, if, if you do any kind of hard work in life, and not just physical hard work, it might be mental hard work, you know, whatever we do as hard work for our life, that will, breed, that will bring profit. But the person who merely talks uh, will only lead to poverty. So yeah. You know, we, I mean, we've all wrestled with that probably sometimes too, but we know people more like that too. The idea that like there's just a lot of talk about what they're going to do, but never get to doing anything or very get to doing only little. And how many times are we like that? We have a lot of talk. You know, I might talk about wanting to get a lot of projects done around the house, but sometimes it's only talk, right? Like the idea that that, that, that talk would move to a point of action. Any action I'm doing, any labor that I'm doing, there's benefit and profit to it. So sometimes it's, Time to just stop talking about it and time to start doing it, knowing that the doing will actually lead to benefit to me and others. Um, verse 25, uh, a truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is deceitful. Right? That idea of honesty versus a dishonesty. But it, I like that it said that a truthful witness saves lives. So the, the reality of truth isn't just uh, to be an honorable person. Oftentimes, when there's lies or deceit, it's a way to protect ourselves from something we've done and some punishment that might come or something like that. But, but the idea of honesty isn't just beneficial to me, but it also saves lives. The idea that like the, the truth is beneficial to me and other people, to you and I and other people that we're connected to. Um, a couple more here. Verse 29, whoever is prudent has great understanding. But the one who is quick-tempered displays folly. So this is similar to one we saw a little bit earlier. The idea of quick-tempered leading to folly. And whoever is prudent, uh, whoever is patient has great understanding. So that idea of patience even looks at the idea of slow to anger. So it's that quick-tempered versus slow to anger or patient. Um, and so that patient person leads to understanding. The quick-tempered person leads to folly. And so... I mean, just thinking through that too, right? Are we a person, can we be a person that is um, slow to anger, patient, hearing what another person has to say, l listening to their, their, their side of a story, to understanding their circumstances that lead into all of that? Like, oh, the more slow pace we can be, the more information we can gather, the more measured response we can have, instead of sometimes making a lot of assumptions, getting angry about those assumptions we've made, and lashing out in some kind of quick-tempered, angered type scenario. 
Uh, last one here. Uh, whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. Like, I love how this is, this is similar. We've seen this before too, but right, the oppression of the poor versus showing kindness or generosity uh, to the poor and needy. But I like how it's connecting that to our response to our creator, right? The, they show contempt to their maker. Sh- the other one honors God. So it's that idea of like, if we disregard the need of people around us, it's actually showing contempt to our maker, to our creator, to our God. On the flip side, if there's a generosity in our heart, that is showing honor to God. Like, so it's that idea that God created all human beings. And our dis- disinterest, disconnection with the hurt of others, the poverty of others, shows a disregard, contempt for God himself. At the same regard, when we take the the wealth and generosity or ex- excess that God's given us and are generous towards other people, like that in and of itself is honoring the God who gave us that and 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 created the other person that is in need. Um, so, I know, a lot of different little subjects here we could focus on and think through, um, but I just encourage you to take some time, maybe find some of these I've already thrown out in this chapter or find some of your own, kind of read through this again and just spend some time really meditating and thinking on Uh, these little nuggets of wisdom, but I'd also encourage you, like, let that move you personally into a time of reflection and, like, a willingness for God to speak into you specifically and personally uh, in in one of those. So don't feel the need to rush quickly into something, but maybe, like, you know, just the idea of really sitting with one of these and really just meditating on what that looks like for you in your life and the change God might want to continue to create in you today. So uh, let's go ahead and pray. And then we'll be done uh, for today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for uh, the truth, the wisdom of your word. Lord, the fact that you are a God that's given us this wisdom, these little nuggets of wisdom for us to meditate on and think on and want to make a part of our lives. Lord, where these were passages we're talking about generosity. Lord, help us to see the poor and the needy around us and help us desire to be generous uh, towards those people. Lord, I pray as well for... Um, Lord, just this hot-tempered, quick-tempered scenario, and help us to be patient and measured and thoughtful, uh, Lord, about uh, the the things that are going on in our life. And Lord, help us to just um, not be quick to anger, but slow to anger, patient uh, with all people. Uh, Lord, even thinking about that idea of uh, life being seasons of of laughter and seasons of grief. Uh, Lord, I pray for those that are going through seasons of grief right now. Lord, I pray that seasons of laughter would be right around the corner. Lord, even in the midst of their grief, that they might find opportunity to laugh and find joy. Um, and Lord, just help us to, to trust you in those moments of grief. Um, Lord, much much more we could process and think through on, on these different nuggets. But Lord, I just pray that uh, you would just that your wisdom would be given to the, the people of your church, your people. And uh, Lord, we would just, as best we can, live out the, the, the reality benefit of your wisdom. So uh, change me today, change us as a church, and help us as we continue to spend time in your word to just grow in our relationship with you. Lord, we love you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Vine Church. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we'll be back here again next week, Lord willing, and uh, we're going to jump back into the next proverb. So we'll talk to you later. Have a good week. Bye.